Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon, arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, and they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your hearts shall feel and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The one camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star that is rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened with all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for a so has been lit by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. But all from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people. Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them with the star until they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening the treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in the dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. My grandmother's funeral was the first funeral I ever attended. I was in third grade, and I hated it. Though I had never before been to a funeral, I had an idea in my mind of what a funeral was supposed to be. And this funeral was anything but that. Her funeral also was my first introduction into how different it was for my grandmother to be a Christian than it was for me. My grandma Helen was a child of immigrants from Eastern Europe. She was raised in a Russian Orthodox church. And such an upbringing led to some strangely specific fights between my grandma Helen and her eight siblings. Were they actually Russian or were they from somewhere else in Eastern Europe, like Ukraine and Romania? And more critically, were they actually of Russian Orthodox lineage, or was their family absolutely Eastern Rite Catholic? I did not know about these things at the time, didn't really care. <laughs> but when I was in third grade, 
I just knew my grandmother was a Christian, and she seemed to always be reading her Bible on the couch. She wrote the same Bible as me, and yet her funeral was anything like any other service I'd ever been to before. I assumed when people went to church, they just spoke English and wore like normal clothes, but the priests were in these long black cassocks and they were swinging these cords around, and everything in the service was chanted in some strange foreign language that I've later learned was church Slavonic. Never heard it before, never heard it since. While I was sitting through this service, there was this voice inside me screaming, This makes no sense. It's pretty easy to respond to things we don't understand, like how I did at my grandmother's funeral, with feelings of anger and frustration, or maybe of fear. I just want to go, This makes no sense. In the last year and a half, there's been a lot of moments where we've wanted to go, this has made no sense. We've experienced lots of new things. What do you mean we should wear a mask when in public? What do you mean that it might not be safe to go to the Christmas party that I've always gone to? What do you mean that I need to get this vaccine and now this booster? It can be disorienting. It can be frustrating. It can be just tiring to have to continue to adjust to this world that never seems to feel normal. In today's gospel, the Magi, the wise men, who are astrologers from the east, probably present-day Persia, saw something strange going on in the sky. There was this new star in the sky pointing them westward towards Israel. In the face of this confusing and unexpected star, the Magi respond with curiosity. In their curiosity, they followed this new star in the sky to see where it would lead them. What was this star about? They were led to Jesus. Like the Magi before us, where might God be leading us into curiosity? As we talked about just a few minutes ago, where might God be leading us with star eyes, with epiphany eyes? This Sunday is the Sunday of the Epiphany, the Sunday where we remember the Magi followed the star to Jesus, the, the Sunday of star eyes. And this Sunday of star eyes is the first time that the Gentiles, those who were not Jews, saw Jesus and encountered God in the flesh, face to face. On this Sunday, we recognize that God reached out to people across the world in ways that made sense to them and pointed them to Jesus. The Magi, who were astrologers, spent time looking at the sky, at the stars. And God sent them a message written in the night sky that was pointing them to Jesus. And then, when Herod tried to make sense of this, he talked to the scribes, the Jewish religious leaders who spent their time looking in the scriptures, and they realize that God sent them a message in the scriptures, pointing them to Jesus. Mighty describes where the guys that were constantly reading the scriptures and the Magi were constantly looking at the stars. The news of God appeared to these that were familiar with the scriptures and familiar with the stars as a joyous surprise. God is still doing this today. God is still reaching out today to you. A joyous surprise, lighting your path and pointing you to Jesus in ways that are familiar, in ways that invite curiosity and perhaps even change. As I look back on my grandmother's funeral, I encountered God reaching out to me in a new way. Amidst me going, this makes no sense. I met a God that stretched beyond what made sense to me. I met a God bigger than I realized. A God who spoke languages that I didn't. A God who received praise through English church and also through church Slavonic. A God for all people. 
Not just for people who spoke like me and thought like me and looked like me. As you step into this new year, how might God be leading you and lighting your path? How might God be leading you with star eyes? Imagine I looked for signs in the natural world. The scribes looked for signs in Scripture. And in Jesus, God entered the world to be with us, gave us the sign and form of a child. How might God be leading you this year? Where might God be inviting you into curiosity? In this new year, in this kind of seems like an ever-changing world, God is doing something new. May you be filled with star eyes. May you be filled with curiosity and joy. I won't do that again. May you be filled with curiosity and joy as you search for where God is present and active in our world today and in our lives.